All right, so first I wanna mention, uh, I apologize for not being at the actual event. We had a power outage here for safety. We had high winds and so they switched off the power here because we're out kind of in the wilderness and it could spark uh, something and cause damage. So they just shut off our powers for you know a few days. So I missed the event, but uh, I was so excited about being able to present with the superhuman platform. Um, and so I just wanted to do this video, again, express my gratitude and just uh, get some information out there because I do have something I feel is pretty important. Right now, we do need superhumans. So to be part of a group that's actually connecting and trying to make this happen across the world is really important. Uh, depression, anxiety, and overwhelm, I mean, we're all feeling these right now. But I read this statistic, it's pretty crazy. It says that one third of Americans have clinical depression or anxiety right now. And uh, although it's kind of specific for the United States, this is a worldwide phenomenon. Right now, especially during this time of COVID where we have this disease and everyone's really scared about things, it, it's pretty trying times in general. So as we're trying to figure out a way to combat this or how do we take this help the, the, with the situation, the one thing that came across from my research and from my experience is play. Play is the answer. Now, although it might seem kind of obvious, I mean, a lot of times the most obvious answers we kind of dismiss. So I want to readdress why play is so important for us in general. So play. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times I'll just ask people, do you play? So if I asked in the group, I would have been like, how many people say that they play? And you get a few, few people putting their hands up or something like that. And maybe we can have a little talk about how they play or what's, what's playing for, how it's important for them. And then I would probably say something like, well, I probably should have asked the question prior to that is, what is the definition of play? How do people play? Now, a lot of times the definition is engaging in an activity for the sure joy of it and entertainment versus having practical purposes, if you will. Unless your purpose is to avoid stress, then of course play is good. But play involves that innocent childlike play that was really essential for us. In, in fact, it, the reason why play is so important is I believe that we're all born here to play. And it's what I call the play instinct. Like babies, when they're born, they look for things to play with. It's actually how we discover the world. It's by touching things, grasping things. What is this? What is this? And sticking it in our mouths or up our nose. <laughs> That's a little trick. But just playing with things. It's, it's how we interact and then we discover that way. So the world is kind of like a playground for us. It's an interactivity of of just trying to figure things out. And one of the reasons why play is so important for me, why I have such a passion about it and discovering more about it is a little bit of an origin story. Um, I was born into a family with two older brothers. Now, my oldest brother says always, when my middle brother was born, before my middle brother was born, he had it made. And then when I was born, his life was just totally ruined, right? But my older brother has, he would turn, he would turn three basically two months after I was born. So we were all really close in age. And that was good in many reasons or, or many, many respects. But the problem was, is that my two older brothers were very good at playing, but they were exceptional at excluding the younger brother, the youngest brother, the, the, the littlest one. So they would always have fun things to do all the time. In fact, we have like two famous pictures in our family is my, both my brothers like diving into this pool and it's a really beautiful shot that my mom has. They're both arced into the, and their fingers are barely touching the water. It's a beautiful shot. But if you look right between the middle arc that they created, you'll see me on the side of the pool with my head between my legs and I'm just bawling. Why? my brothers wouldn't let me get into the pool. And we were staying at this little place in the desert of California and it was summertime. So it was hot there and they wouldn't let me into the pool. <laughs> so I was not a happy camper. And the second famous picture, if you will, is 
we're in front of my mom's house that she grew up in in Holland. And my brother's sitting there with their arms around each other, just this big grins. And if you look in the side of the picture, you'll see me crying. I'm on the ground, just literally crying again. I'm looking up at them with this, this thing. It's just tears are down my face like this. And I remember my mom scolding me for crying a lot because I was kind of a crybaby. It was my way of getting attention. But my brothers in that picture pushed me down before they took the picture and jumped into it like that really quickly. But uh, yeah, so this play instinct, I didn't really get at home that much. So I was that kid who went to all the neighborhood kids and said, come on, can we play outside? Come on, play, play. So that became my focus when I was younger. But inevitably, as it happens for most of us, it gets shut down as we age. Now, parents will inevitably deny this play instinct. I, I have to take from my own personal experience of uh, my son. Uh, when he was younger, he played differently than, than I really could relate with anymore. So I shut him down a lot, even when he was growing up as a baby. But that happens. Parents can't fulfill that need all the time. So part of us, that, 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 play, that playful spirit that we have kind of gets locked away a little bit. Then as we age, we go into a school system and this school system basically conforms or confines play into recess time, into break time. And even then we have a bunch of rules that we have to follow. So it's not a fluid free form play state that goes up until we get into high school. And then high school, we kind of even narrow down our playful state even more into one of competition. And this puts out a whole other slew of, of adverse effects to actually what the play state is. And then after high school, personally, uh, I went into the military and uh, there wasn't a lot of play going on in the military. I can tell you that. But <laughs> then a lot of us or a number of us will go to college. And then in college, most of the time, play is based around uh, partying if you will. And that's kind of relieve the stress that we're in of all this studying and trying to focus on all of our potential human potential down to a task that we can do or getting into a job market uh, where play is considered to be the antithesis to productivity. But the modern research or science is coming out saying the exact opposite is true. And Playful minds are the driving force minds. They're the ones that can come up with creative ideas and don't stress out as much. A playful mind thrives in competition, finding unique ways to get around and solve situations that seem overwhelming to a stressed out mind. So a lot of companies are actually switching their format to being more playful. Google, they have a whole campus based upon it. I mean, not only are they, they encouraging play, but they're encouraging interactiveness with their coworkers, uh, so that you have that that team spirit, if you will. And of course, if you enjoy coming to work, guess what? You're going to perform better. You're going to do longer hours, even voluntarily. And they find out they have better performance. So the a lot of mainstream companies are like, "There's, no, you don't have any vacation days. You don't have any time off. You come to work if you want to. If you don't want to come to work, you don't come to work." But they're finding out when they say that to employees and they encourage that, that environment of playfulness in the work area, they don't, go to, they don't go on vacation. Their vacation, why would I go on vacation? I'm having so much fun at work. So productivity and play and work go hand in hand. It's about finding out how we can do this. And my research, if you will, what, what I've been trying to, to, to get a focus in is what I call... Um, a play flow state. And what this is, is kind of activating this play state with what the flow state is. Now, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the flow state, but here's a brief summary of it. Um, the flow state is when we have this thing that's called transient hypofrontality. So that's when the front part of our brain or the prefrontal cortex basically shuts down and it allows the other parts of our brain to become more active and more focused. This happens when we're engaged in an activity 
that's challenging enough for our brain not to shut down, but not overly challenging where our brain will actually switch off. That's when it becomes too challenged. So this nice sweet spot, um, if you can stay in that for at least 10 minutes, and this is when the flow state occurs. Now, this happens for a lot of different work, people who work. It happens for authors all the time, for engineers, programmers, um, uh, sports people get into this flow state. It's when you're on fire or dreaming. Uh, it's just when you're beyond. Now, what happens, uh, what the interesting thing is, is when your frontalis, this part of your brain, it houses your sense of time. Uh, so time dilates, it either slows down or speeds up, as well as your sense of self is housed in this prefrontal cortex. So that negative voice that can come in your head and tell you not to do things or you suck at something or blah, 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 that gets erased. You get opened up to a whole universal consciousness, if you will. So when authors get into the state, that's when they say sometimes it's free from writing. Just keep on writing, keep on writing. And then uh, I heard the expression, uh, you, you're, you're, you're chasing the devil. You're getting away from the devil. The negative talking in your voice saying you can't write. This doesn't make sense or anything like that. You get past that when you write quickly and then you get into that flow state and then the, the, the ideas just flow into you. So programmers get into that as well. If they're finding out complex situations, and they'll all of a sudden find a unique route to come up with those answers. So that's the flow state. But if we take that and we activate play with that flow state, we try to connect those two, then we can jump into a play flow state easily. We can remind ourselves that we are playful beings in general. And we awaken up, we, we keep on tickling that inner child that's been locked away, scared to come out in, in a world that's basically based around fear and competition and all these things that the child in us really doesn't want to do. The, the, the children, when they play, they, they work together. They, they try to prolong the play by making things balanced versus trying to dominate a team and crush them and have the, have the competition or the, the play end early. So this is really important, especially in our workforce, because when we talk about work and what it does, a lot of people associate work with overwork, o overworked. People, people are overworked. The, the, the stress that's incorporated into our job market right now is, is demanding. And when you have this type of competition going on, you sacrifice everything to, to have this job. You, you sacrifice your social life, your, your sleep, which is your health. And all these things, we get really depressed and we're just stressed out all the time. It doesn't work. Now, I can also relate to this. It's another little origin story that I talk about is uh, at one time, I was doing a very stressful corporate type of job, uh, pitching an idea to a company. Uh, I was working about 100 hours a week. I slept in my office uh, behind my behind my a couch that I had there and wake up, work all day for – and then you know, as soon as I crashed, I went to sleep. And then I have one day a week off. I go home and, and do my laundry basically to start the next week. But – this job just got more and more stressful as I, as my responsibilities increased. I and mean, when we first pitched the idea that we got the job, and then I had to make sure I had to train everybody how to do it and make sure everything ran smoothly. So it was a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. And I was invited into my boss's office, and he was like, look, we love what you're doing. Uh, we want you to continue with the, with the project here. We're going to give you, you know, write down your, your one-month plan, your six-month plan, your one-year plan, five-year plan, ten-year plan. Write down some figures. We'll match them. We want you on board, Xander. And I wrote on the paper my one-minute plan. I quit, and I handed it to him. And He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I've got to go. I, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. I, I've got to get out of here. So at that point in time, I basically took all of my possessions and I put it down to a backpack. And um, as I was heading out the door with this backpack on, one of my friends said to me, hey, Xander, do you have a hack with you? Now, I'm referring to this thing called a hacky sack. Here's a sample of one of them. And um, 
I, I wasn't a hacky sack player or a foot bag player is a generic term because uh, hacky sack is owned by Whammo. It's a company name. And I, I just said, no, I don't really do it. At that time, I thought it was a hippie game and I wasn't really one of those hippie guys yet, but I was a corporate person. And my friend said, hey, look, just keep this in your pocket. It's going to be the best gift anyone will ever give you. So I'm like, okay. I put it in my pocket. I gave my friend a hug and I headed to the airport. Now, when I got to the airport, my flight ended up being three hours delayed. And, you know, I was I'm like, it's, it's a delayed. So I'm like, okay. So I take my stuff, I head it over the terminal, I'm sitting down, I'm about ready to pull out a book to start reading, but all of a sudden I felt the hack in my pocket and it was just sitting there. I got, okay, I'll give this thing a, I'll give this, I'll give this thing a go. So I, I picked up all my stuff and went to a corner and just started kicking it by myself. You know, just a couple of times, kicking it a little bit. I, I played one time when I was younger um, for a moment, but I didn't have much fun with it. So. I figured, okay, I'll just try it out. I did it for a little bit, but very quickly, somebody from my flight came up and started playing with me, all right? And all of a sudden, I'm playing with this stranger in a non-violent, cooperative competition way. And we're encouraging each other. We're just like, yeah, come on, good job, great job. You know, giving each other warm fuzzies instantly, two humans nice job interacting all of a sudden we're on the same team there's no losers in hack so that was extraordinary and before long i mean we went into this i went to this play flow state because before long we got the call from the lady she was like hey you guys come on the flight's about ready to leave get over here you know so we're like okay so we grab our things we run into the terminal we're laughing right we're just enjoying it we we get to the terminal and and the hostess says hey, hey you guys I just want to let you know, it was so exciting to watch you play and how many people actually came by to say how fun it was just to watch you guys play. So thank you. And we're like, cool. Wow. We give each other high fives. We give her a high five. Feeling great. We enter the play. Now, my new friend basically has to sit down pretty quickly, but my seat is in the back of the plane. So as I'm walking down this alley, I see one person just smile at me. One person's giving me one of these, you know, one guy gave me a high five on my way to the seat, smiling. It just, I got so many warm fuzzies. By the time I got to my seat and I was sitting down, I'm feeling like a superstar. You know, I'm feeling so good just from the warm fuzzies I was receiving. But I sit down in my seat and I feel into my body and I've just done three solid hours of exercise, bouncing around in my body, moving myself in these weird new ways. And my body felt extraordinary. And then I had that other aha moment. This thing was still in my pocket and it was going play, play, play. I had it. I had this tool that allowed me to go anywhere and play. Every time I was waiting for a train, a plane, a bus, guess what? I could pull this thing out and play. I go to a park anywhere in the world, start playing. Somebody cool would usually come up and play with me. Not always, but a lot of the time. And if somebody did play with me, I had a friend. I remember one time I was playing down in, in Byron Bay, Australia, Dan Under, right? We had like 15 mates around, Sheila's too, so we had like, Males and females from all over the world, 15 of us with one guy in the middle we called the Savior, and we were playing a great game. We did get one hack, and that's when everyone in the circle touches it, and we did this big group hug thing. We all ran towards the middle and gave that guy in the middle a hug, you know, hug and then ran out. We did that three times, just whoa, ah, whoa, you know, and just loving him up, but loving each of us. That was 16 humans giving each other love in this one circle area, facing each other with just beautiful vibes. Mind-blowing how amazing that is, right? And it's something you can fit into your pocket. So I call hack, or what I call this 
I, I call it something a little bit different. I call these hackitos, and then that I call this uh, hacky kicking is at the, the hacky part of kicking it. But that for me is the ultimate physical exercise. And one of the fastest ways I've come across as far as getting into this play flow state and having a great time anywhere with something you can put in your pocket. You don't need special equipment, right? You don't need to have special padding. You don't even have to have a special area or a special court. The rules are very simple and anyone can do it. And the long history of what hack is around the world, it, it goes to many cultures. Uh, Apparently, Chinese warriors would play hack before going into battle to loosen themselves up and get themselves into warrior mode. Um, they're in different Southeast Asia, they have all different types of games that are similar to hack. Uh, Native Americans, apparently they would use the scrotum of a buffalo uh, as a hack. Uh, mind you, it was a dead buffalo or the, the second kick would not be as fun. Changes the game a little bit. But hack is extraordinary for the game and just for your body and play. So I call it the ultimate physical exercise. Now, along those lines, another fun little side story is I was also traveling in Indonesia at one time with some Danish friends. That all makes sense. That'll make sense in a little bit, but these guys were on a surf safari and they wanted me to come out surfing with them and I did a couple of times, but I was always beyond shore looking at the beach going, I could be playing hack right now. So I eventually started playing hack, just watching them surf every once in a while, but just playing hack. But they came up to me and they said, you play a lot of hack, but do you know how to juggle? And I said, no, I've never done juggling. So they said, you know what, you're going to start learning now. And so they handed me three Ramatons. And so I started learning how to juggle. And juggling took me about two weeks to get what I call a flash, and that's where you can throw three of them up at once. Here's a job. Here's, that's a well, that's a little bit more than a flash. That's a flash. One, two, three. Right. It took me about two weeks to get that down, and uh, I it was okay. But they invited me to come back to Denmark, and so I spent a winter time hanging out with them and their friends in Denmark, and we go from house to house, you know, in little groups, go to somebody's house, and they would have juggling balls there, and so. I'd pull out the juggling balls and I'd, I'd practice learning how to juggle. And so I eventually got the cascade going well. And then I started learning different tricks. You want to learn more tricks, you learn juggling. So you start learning more tricks. And it was great. And I, and I learned a lot of tricks over the years, but not too many. And I didn't really totally get into juggling until I was much older. But I still kept up with it a little bit. But recently, in the last few years, I've discovered how amazing juggling is for your brain. It's just now coming to the forefront of like juggling is considered, I consider it to be the ultimate brain exercise. There's really nothing that stimulates the left and right hemispheres the way juggling is. It's about something while you're catching and throwing at the same time as your left and right hemispheres, you're going cross brain and it does something extraordinary for your brain with the rhythm of it as well. And Built white as well as gray matter. It's supposed to help out with Alzheimer's and dementia. There's just a slew, a laundry list of reasons why juggling is so amazing. I'm actually working with the with a brain coach, Jim Quick, because he talks about juggling as being extraordinary for your brain and encourages it. And we're now collaborating to talk about how we can do it. And I'm actually creating a a kit with him. This, <laughs> this is a sample of one of my kits, but I put together those little kits that have hemp fabric, hemp seeds, and all these things you can put together to make three little hacks. You can learn juggling. You can throw them at each other. I call these the ultimate play tools. And for me, once you know what that is, what that means, then the world becomes your playground again. And for me, that's the point. That really is the point. We need to remind ourselves that we are here to play. If we can play, one of my slogans is play with thyself. And this has a deep meaning for, for me because if, if we can do that, if we can awaken up this play flow state and recognize that, that we are here to play, not only with ourselves, with, with, with life in general, but especially with each other because humans are really good at this. We are extraordinary players until we believe that we're not, until we're told not to do that, 
And then we start losing this ability, this gift. And life is a gift. Life is a playground. I, I don't see any other reason for it other than just to experience this physical body and experience life to its fullest. Play is that answer. Nothing else really enlightens me as much as play does. And learning these simple tricks, I mean, learning how to juggle. I have a course online. Yay, little pump. But I do have a little plug for my course. But I have a free course online that teaches you steps to learn how to juggle that are a lot easier than actually trying to learn a three-ball cascade this way. Right? This is great. It's dandy, but there's other steps you can do. So I do have a course out there, and I have a longer course on play, and that involves teaching people how to make these things and all these other little aspects of how you get your brain into this play flow state and why it's so important, especially now. So superhumans, I just want to confirm with you guys that we are, we've got this. We're collaborating all over the world right now and to be a part of a group that is focused on this and trying to really change our world is so important. So I want to thank you personally for showing up. I'm sorry I did not show up for the actual course and if you're watching this, thank you for taking the time to watch us outside of the actual program. Everything happens for a reason so I, I'm as much as I'm like, oh, I'm bummed out I missed there, I'm hoping that the interactivity of being able to put this in this format will reach more people, hopefully, because we need to do this. And, you know, check out the website, hackido.org. That's no little pump for it, but that's H-A-C-K-I-D-O.org. Um, hopefully my new website will be up by the time you guys see this. I'm in transition to making it more about uh, the actual things that we need to do to make this solid and, and make this transformation happen. So thank you once again. Appreciate your time. Have a great one, you guys, and enjoy your playground. And get into your play flow state, all right? Aloha. Blessings.